Yo, so I don't know if this is true or not, but I've been hearing recently that Snoop Dogg quit smoking weed, which is kind of crazy because it seems like his whole brand was built behind smoke. And so now he's saying no more dope, yo. And so I thought it was a good opportunity to talk to yo about what happens when you quit weed. So, you know, I didn't start smoking pot till I was damn near 35 years old. And so I knew what I was like before smoking dope and then i fell or how you would say rose right high got high with my head in the sky and it was surrounded by clouds for about five years and so there was a contrast for me now if you started smoking weed when you're real young it's going to be a little tougher because you forget who you are in fact you have no idea who you are you started smoking weed when you're 14 and now you're 24 you went through an entire phase of life not knowing who you are without being high. You always had those high shades on, high glasses on, high mind, high ideas, you know, head in the clouds. And so it's gonna be a lot tougher, but you'll be surprised at the magnificent brilliance that you can actually bring forth when you get your head out of the clouds. But like I said, for me, I knew what it was like to be a young adult. I had a lot of ambition, I was a young father, uh, Y'all knew me, you know, so I knew myself not being high. By 35, I decided to start smoking and, well, it was cool, but it got a little bit to be a, a little bit too much, right? When I say it was cool, it was like, I enjoyed being high, but then I forgot who I was. I didn't know this guy no more. And so I had to get rid of it, yo. And it was a lot harder than a lot of people will put on. I call it dope copers. You know, all the guys who smoke weed and they're like, oh, it's natural. Oh, you can smoke weed and be just fine. But it's the same dudes when you ask them like, okay, when's the last time you stopped smoking? They can't tell you. They say, oh, there's no, there's no problem. And they've been smoking since they were like 14 years old. Now they're 34. It's like, well, if it's not a problem, then why can't you stop? Anyway, tangent over. Um, the point is, in my experience, it was kind of tough quitting the devil's lettuce, right? And so uh, I figured today I'll talk a little bit about what to expect, some of the advice that I give to my students when they come to my program, War on Vice, King Transformation, and they wanna, they wanna break habits, they wanna break vices, they wanna get rid of the ball and chain of the anchors that are holding them back from being their best selves, but particularly with weed, because that was the one thing that I got addicted to, right? There wasn't too many other things in my life. Never been much of a drinker, never really used porn. Um, all those things are tough. But weed in particular has a particular sort of phases that you're gonna go through. And so, let me tell you what those are and how to best deal with them. What do you think, yo? Helpful? Let's go. So, when you stop smoking weed, the very first thing that you're gonna notice are those weird ass dreams. Weird dreams, man. And when I was having those dreams, I would take them very seriously, like, like, like there was some sort of premonition, you know, uh, which reminds me, like, when you stop smoking weed, you still got a lot of weed in your system. And as you're detoxing weed, you're still getting high. It's a weird thing, too. I'll come back to that. But, you know, being, being a dude that was used to getting high, and then I started having these dreams, I'm using my high ideas to interpret these dreams, and I'm thinking they actually mean something, right? You know, I'm not Carl Jung over here trying to interpret symbols and shit, but... I thought I had the wherewithal to determine what these dumb dreams, dreams meant. And now in retrospect, you know, I kept a lot of journals and stuff and I read them. And in retrospect, I'm like, this is just gobbledygook. It's just garbage coming up from my brain. And I realized because when you smoke weed, uh, you know, probably any drug, any numbing agent, you're suppressing what wants to come to the surface. I know that there was traumas in my life. I'm not saying I'm traumatized or have PTSD, although I think we all do to some degree. But there's shit that you don't want to deal with. There's stuff that went on that you don't want to confront. And I knew that was the case for me in my life. And so when you smoke, dope, get drunk or strokey stroke, what you're doing is you're numbing yourself so that you can stuff that stuff down. And while you're stuffing that down, you're stuffing down all kinds of stuff. You know, you got to remember that like your brain, your nervous system, your eyes, your ears, you know, even your intuition is just taking shit in from the environment everywhere all the time. And it has to be processed. 
You're an open system. The human nervous system is an open system. What is an open system? It takes in and it lets out, right? In and out, it's an open system, it's a loop, right? And if it gets dammed up, well, then you break the open system. You're no longer an open system. And that's why like, you know, once again, I know people will argue with me, but smoking weed makes you dumb. Because you're no longer an open system. You're no longer taking things in and been producing. Have you noticed that dudes that smoke a lot don't produce much? I know that was the case for me, right? Because you close the open system. You might take stuff in, but there's no processing of it, right? And so the dreams, I'm still stuck on that. The dreams are that dam opening up, the floodgates opening up. Bang! It's like, wow, 18 months worth of shit that you didn't want to look at. And this comes all of it just comes up and starts flooding your dreams. Don't take them seriously. Also, I remember, and I'm sticking with sleep here for a moment, I would wake up with like cold sweats and fear, fear in my solar plexus. You know how you know it's fear? Fear is a feeling, right? Of course, fear is a feeling, but what is a feeling? It's something that you feel, right? Most people think that it's in their mind. The mind can affect the body by causing you to feel something about the thoughts. And so, um, man, I just remember like this area right here, solar plexus or, or diaphragm, right? Whatever you want to call it. Did you know that it's like a second brain? Did you know that your solar plexus or your diaphragm, whatever you want to call it, um, it has just as many nerve innervations as like, or more nerve innervations and more efferent and afferent nerves, meaning nerves coming in and out from it than anywhere else in your body. It's literally like this area is like a second brain between the heart and the gut. It's kind of crazy. And so most emotion, is, particularly strong emotion, is felt right here. And I just remember having that, like, just like, well, it felt like butterflies, but like butterflies on steroids in my gut. And it was just terrible. And one of the things that I did in order to mitigate that, right, because that's the point of this video, like don't believe your dreams, and don't believe the fears. But the problem is that if you're feeling a fear, it's not a belief anymore. It's a literal feeling. A feeling is not a belief. A feeling is physical and it's totally unconscious. So what do you do about it? You gotta breathe, brother. You gotta breathe into your balls. You gotta breathe, but better yet than breathing is using a mantra, a mantra. I was reading a cool little book the other day called Christian Meditation. And apparently the early Christians would use mantras, meaning that they would pray unceasingly, as St. Paul says, and they would do it specifically with this ancient prayer, simplest prayer called the Jesus prayer or the prayer of the heart. And this is I learned about this, you know, several years ago when I quit smoking weed and I would breathe. Right. Because it, it, it's it softens that tension in the solar plexus, but it will, but I would breathe in the mantra, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. So I'm invoking the name of Jesus in my prayer or in my breathing, right? Yoking the breath with the mind and the body. And that was immensely helpful. Something I still do today if I'm anxious or worried or, you know, just uh, just needing some solace. Just breathe it in. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Number two, you got to understand that you're going to go through a detox. I don't care how you swing it. All that sticky, icky, gooey weed. It's jamming up your systems like it's in your body it, and it gets trapped in your fat tissue. So here's the crazy thing. When you start, let's say you smoking weed for like 10 years, a lot of that THC is still trapped in your body. And I don't know what it is that comes out in your piss when they test you for your piss test, but that's evidence that there's still something in your body. So a lot of times, like we try to quit, but it's even harder because our body is releasing more THC, which kind of gives us the taste of what it feels like to be high. And of course, if you keep if you keep getting like little feelings of being high, which will happen, I'll tell you why in a moment. You're, it's, it's the cravings are much stronger, so you got to understand what's going on. But as your as your body is 
sort of processing the THC and no more is coming back in, it's being released into your blood system, into your bloodstream. And the crazy thing is too, a lot of it gets trapped in your fat. So if you, if you like trying to do it all at once and you're like, I'm gonna quit weed and I'm gonna start working out, you're gonna be high. You're gonna be high even though you didn't smoke because your body's gonna be releasing it into your system. So understand that you're gonna go through a, a, a period of time where you're basically still high. And I remember this specifically because it caused me to use a new, a different practice. I'm gonna teach you another tip. Here's another tip for y'all. When you find that you're in that detox period and it's just, you're, you're sort of in a limbo, you're in a weird space between like, yo, I was high every day to now I'm like in this uncomfortable place, moving towards being clear again. You gotta learn how to sit. Just sit in the stillness, sit with the pain, sit with the angst. And that's when I like was forced to begin meditating. And I didn't even know I was meditating at the time when I, caught, when I was doing this. I literally had no other choice but to sit down with my hands on my knees and breathe and just allow myself to be. And so when I was speaking with my students about this, one of the things that came up was the word throning. And it was like, yeah, you're, you're becoming a king and you're sitting on your throne. That's what I would say. Just be like a king on his throne. What is a king doing on his throne? He's allowing himself to be. Whatever needs to process is being processed. There he is. There you should be. Just allow it to be. So allow that time. And then, um, and then the third one is, oh, I forgot. So I realized I combined number two and number three, right? So number two and number three were combined. Number three was throne, sit, allow it to pass. I'll give you a bonus though, number four, and that is you gotta be patient with yourself. You gotta understand that it's gonna take a long time for you to get, the back, get back to who you were before you were high all the time. And I like to say that you gotta take the amount of months to to process this as the amount of years that you were smoking. So if you were smoking every day for like five years, right, which was my situation, smoking every day five years, and it's gonna take at least five months for you to get back to normal. So yo, if this happens to be helpful to you, let me know, but I hope that if you didn't start smoking dope, you don't start now. I know they're trying to make it legal in every damn state. They even got like legal weed in some of these states. Don't fall for it, fellas. In my opinion, it ain't worth it. I don't care if they call it medicine. I don't care if they call it, you know, and make it seem like it's some kind of spiritual thing. Bottom line, it's a dependency. It's something that's outside you that you're depending on in order to make you feel okay. And that's always a problem. You want to be clean and free and dependent on nothing but the Lord. Done.